Welcome to Trigonometry Video Lecture Section 2.2 on Calculators and Trigonometric Functions of an Acute Angle. So for this section, you're going to need to use a scientific, or you can just use a basic non-graphing calculator to compute and complete the homework assignment. Now, previously we defined one degree to be 1 360th of a full rotation and we can break this degree down even further. So if we divide one degree into 60 equal parts, then each of those little parts is called one minute, and we denote that with a little tick mark. It looks like an apostrophe. And then one minute now is 1 60th of a degree, meaning that there's 60 minutes in every degree, and that should sit well with you since there's 60 minutes in an hour. And then the next smaller unit of angle measure is a second. So one second, and we indicate that with two tick marks now, is 1 60th of a minute. And there's 60 seconds in every minute. So the vocab we're using is consistent with base 60 measurement system, which is what we use when we measure time as well. Okay, so to reiterate, one degree contains 60 minutes and that means one minute is 1 60th of a degree and also one minute is 60 seconds which means that one minute is 1 60th of a degree all right so let's look at some examples here and get used to working with degrees and minutes simultaneously so add or subtract as indicated here we have 77 degrees and 21 minutes plus 26 degrees and 44 minutes okay what i'm going to do is just add the degree portion together add the minute portion together and then we'll go from there so 77 plus 26 that's going to give me 103 degrees and then now i'm going to add together 21 minutes and 44 minutes well what does that give us that gives us 65 minutes. But remember, 60 minutes is equal to one degree. That means I don't wanna leave the minutes in this angle larger than 60. What I need to do is take 60 of them away since they're equal to one degree and now make this 104 degrees and only five minutes. Okay. Good. Let's look at another example here. Example B, we have 63 degrees, 38 minutes, plus 24 degrees and 54 minutes. So we're going to first add together the degree portion. So we have 63 degrees and 24 degrees. Well, what does that give us? That gives us 87 degrees. And then we have here 38 minutes and 54 minutes. So if I add those together, that gives me 92 minutes. Again, 92 is larger than 60. So what I'm going to do is take 92 minutes, subtract 60 minutes, since that's equal to one degree, and I get 32 minutes. And then now this one degree gets added on to my 87 degrees. So now we have 88 degrees and 32 minutes. Nice. Now it can be a little trickier with subtraction. So here we have 77 degrees and 21 minutes minus 26 degrees and 44 minutes. So what I notice right off the bat is I'm going to need to do some borrowing because I can't take 44 minutes from 21 minutes. So I'm going to borrow from the 77 degrees and now make it 76 degrees. And the 21 minutes, I'm going to add 60 to that. It's going to become 81 minutes. And then now I'm subtracting 26 degrees and 44 minutes. So it's just like when you borrow with regular subtraction, it's just that since we're working in a base 60 numbering system, when you borrow, you borrow 60. Okay, so 76 minus 26, that's going to be 50 degrees. And then 81 minutes minus 44 minutes is 37 minutes. And box it, looks good. 
last one like this, we have 63 degrees, 38 minutes, minus 24 degrees and 54 minutes. Again, I need to borrow because I can't take 54 from 38. So 63 is going to become 62 degrees. Adding 60, now this is 98 minutes, minus 24 degrees and 54 minutes. Okay, so 62 minus 24, that's going to give us 38 degrees. And then now 98 minus 54 is 44 minutes. And that is it. All right, now we're going to look at some degrees that are being measured that have decimals and convert them to degrees and minutes instead of using decimals. So what do we mean by here? Well, you're gonna take the portion of the degree, so the, the part after the decimal, and multiply it by 60. That way you figure out exactly how many minutes there are. Remember, one minute is equal to 1 60th of a degree. So whatever decimal portion we have, we're gonna multiply by 60 in order to end up with the minutes. It's kind of like canceling out the denominator. Okay, so we're gonna take 0.85, multiply by 60, and it's fine if you need your calculator for this, and we get 51, and that's in minutes. And so now, I'm going to put together everything for our final answer. We have 48 degrees and 51 minutes. All right, next one, 8.3 degrees. Again, we're going to take the portion after the decimal, so 0.3, the fraction of a degree. Really, this is 3 tenths, right? But I want to change it to a base 60. So we multiply by 60, and this gives me 18. So this is eight degrees and 18 minutes. All right, now we're gonna go in the opposite direction of what we just did. So we're gonna change each of these decimals into degrees and round to the nearest hundredth. Hundredth means two decimal places. Now these are already in degrees, minutes, seconds. So instead of multiplying by 60, like we did last time, we're going to divide. So 37 minutes, I would divide that by 60. And then the 8 seconds, I'm actually going to divide that by 3600 because it's 1 60th of 1 60th of a degree. All right, so get your calculators ready. This is going to be equal to 78 degrees plus 37 over 60 degrees plus eight over 3,600 degrees. And in your calculator, if it's a scientific calculator, not a basic one, that can understand order of operations, you should be able to just punch in 78 plus 37 divided by 60 plus eight divided by 3,600, and then round your answer to two decimal places, since the directions told us to round to the nearest hundredth. All right, so I'll let you make sure you can get that in the calculator on your own, and you should end up with 78.62 degrees. Nice. One more example like this. So we have 21 degrees, 16 minutes, 5 seconds. Again, I'm going to leave 21 degrees alone. I'm going to take 16, divide that by 60 to convert it to degrees, plus 5 divided by... 3600 degrees. So in your calculator, you're going to punch in 21 plus 16 divided by 60 plus 5 divided by 3600. Add it all together, and you should end up with 21.27 degrees after you round. All right. Good, so now we're gonna work with our calculators a little more for the following. And it's instructing us to round all answers to four decimal places. 
All right, so the first one, we're gonna find cosine of 78 degrees and 37 minutes. Now, you might notice in your calculator, um, I have a TI-30X2S, and there's actually a button up above um, sine, cosine, and tangent near probability, and it has like a degree sign and one tick mark and two tick marks. So I can choose whether or not I'm entering in degrees, minutes, or seconds. So first things first, make sure your calculator's in degree mode. So it should say a D on the screen somewhere, not an R or a DEG, not rad. Make sure you're in degrees. And then the other thing is select um, degrees and minutes and seconds appropriately. So find wherever cosine is on your calculator. Then you're gonna punch in 78, select the degree sign, then 37, select the minute sign, and hit equals. And we're rounding these to four decimal places. So you should end up with 0 0.1974. Now, what if your calculator doesn't have the option to give minutes? Well, you could convert it on your own. So remember, another option is taking 37 divided by 60, adding that to 78 degrees, and this comes out to 78.616 repeating degrees. Don't clear your calculator, you would just take cosine of that and you'll get the same thing, okay? So if your calculator doesn't have the ability to do minutes and seconds, that's fine. You can just convert the measure into degrees and then work from there, but be careful not to round, store the number and then take cosine of that. Okay, let's try another one. We have cotangent of 31 degrees. Now, most calculators only have a button for sine, cosine, and tangent. So if we need cotangent, remember cotangent is one over tangent of that angle. So you're gonna take one divided by tangent of 31 degrees. Not one over 31 degrees, no, no, no. All right, couple ways to do this. Don't hit the tan inverse key. That's totally something else. We'll talk about that in a couple chapters. You can take tangent of 31 degrees, punch that in, and then it, my calculator has a key below sign that looks like this. That'll take the reciprocal of any number, or you can just take one divided by tangent of 31 and use your parentheses. Either way, you should end up with 1.6643. If you're struggling with the calculator, then just let me know when you come to class or you can always meet with me or go to the math center and they'll help you out. Okay, similarly, we have cosecant of 48 degrees and 48 minutes. So cosecant of theta, remember that's the reciprocal of sine. So I'm actually going to punch in one over sine of 48 degrees and 48 minutes, and you should get 1.3291. Again, if you do not have the minutes feature on your calculator, no problem. So 48 divided by 60 is actually 0.8. So alternatively, you could do one over sine of 48.8 degrees and still get 1.3291. All right, very nice. Let's move on to a few more examples. So sine of 27.8 degrees, this is actually much easier than the ones we were doing because everything's in degrees, no reciprocals needed. You're just gonna straight up punch this in the calculator and you should get 0.4664. Next one is tangent of 18.7 degrees. You should get 0.3385. And then lastly, secant of 81.3 degrees. So remember secant's reciprocal function is cosine. So this is one over cosine of 81.3 degrees. And you should get 6.6111.
Very nice. All right, last couple examples. Now we're gonna use the inverse feature. It says, use a calculator to find the value of theta that satisfies each statement, with theta being between zero and 90. So here we have cosine of theta equals 0.9777. And we wanna know what was theta, what was the angle? Well, now is when you're gonna use that inverse button. So on my calculator, here's cosine, and then up above it, it says cos inverse like that. But in order to use cos inverse, I have to hit second first in the upper left. So yours should be something similar like that, or a shift key or something. So in order to get theta, what you're gonna do is punch into the calculator cosine inverse of 0.9777. Again, make sure you're in degree mode, not radians. So cosine inverse of 0.9777. This is gonna give us theta, which is an angle, which is being measured in degree. So make sure you put the degree sign. And again, we'll round to four decimal places since they had us do that in the previous example. So I have 12.1227 degrees. Lovely. Same thing here, we have tangent theta equals 6.2703. So theta is gonna equal tan inverse of 6.2703. Your tan inverse key should be right near where tangent is and you should get 80.9387 degrees. Don't forget the degree sign on all these guys. And then lastly, this one's a little tricky. Cosecant of theta equals 4.3219. So remember, cosecant theta is one over sine theta. So this means one over sine theta equals 4.3219. So if I take the reciprocal of both sides, that means sine of theta equals one over 4.3219. All right, so what does that mean for us? That means for us in the calculator, what you're gonna punch in is sine inverse of one over 4.3219, and you should get 13.3783 degrees. Good. So that concludes the lesson. Again, be patient with yourself as you figure it out. Every calculator is different. So I just kind of gave general instructions, but reach out to me if you're one of my students and I will help you troubleshoot with the calculator. All right, great job. Coming up next is solving right triangles.